Shalom, Gabe Greenberg here, Rabbi of Congregation Beth Israel in New Orleans, Louisiana, learning with you this week the commentary of the Netziv on the weekly Torah portion. This week, Parshat Achare Motz Kedoshim. We'll be looking at Leviticus chapter 19, verse 19. The verse tells us, Et hukotai tishmoru, my God, my laws, my statutes, you should keep. Behemtecha lo tarbia kilayim, your animals should not uh, be crossbred. This would be called kilayim, and there's going to be another, ex- uh, another two more examples of a kilayim in this verse. Sadcha lo tizra kilayim, your field should not be sown by, uh, with a mixture of crops that would be considered an improper admixture of ca- called kilayim. Uveged kilaim shatnez, and a type of clothing that would be an ad mix, improper mixing of fabrics um, would also be called kilaim, and a particular kind called shatnez. Lo ya'ale alecha should not be upon you. You shouldn't wear this type of clothing. The Nitziv is going to focus mostly on the third category here. Not the crossbreeding, not the agricultural, but the clothing, which we call shatnez, which is defined not here, but later in Deuteronomy to be a mixture of uh, cotton and flax. So the Nitziv uh, here, uh, I chose to share this piece not because it's particularly instructive for our ethical lives or into the Nitziv's view of the world or theology, but really because of an interesting comment that the Nitziv makes while, discuss- while discussing this particular law of Kilaim and Shatniz. So first, he agrees with the sort of generalized a standard uh, opinion about what these laws are about, uh, picking up first with a known midrash that our verse opens with et chukotai tishmaru, you should keep my statutes, that this word chok, which normally we take to mean a statute or a law, in particular one that we might not know the reason for, is related to the word shechakakti, chukim shechakakti shemaim va'aretz, laws that I inscribed in uh, the workings of the heavens and earth, meaning that God made the world, created Maseb um, Reshit, the workings of science and the natural world to work in a certain way. And when we go against those internal rules, we violate the laws of improper mixtures. And this is an example of what's happening here. Kacha Perush Khan, that's what's happening here. Uh, as he says, so he goes on. mean someone who mixes one type with something which is not of its type. In the case of shatnez clothing, that means tsemer uh, ufishtim, cloth, uh, wool, and flax. So the question is, in what ways are those from different types? In one general, one uh, more well-known explanation is that one is from the animal world, one is from the plant world. If you do that, you have destroyed their internal, something about their internal nature in, in uh, combining them. That's what happens when you wear this. The individual strands of cotton of cloth or of flax had internal capabilities, but by wearing, mixing them and wearing them, you destroy an aspect of what they had. And now here comes the Nitziv's interesting comment. This is one of the secrets of the natural world. And it's known to scientists Remember, he was writing over a hundred years ago. Shehakosher hut shazur shel tzemer ufishtim. Someone who uh, ties a strand, which is interwoven of uh, cotton 
and flax. When you mix that thread together, al chut barzel shel ha telegraph. He writes uh, the word telegraph here. Uh, that if you were to mix it with a metal wire, seemingly of a phone wire, um, then mafsik hamshachat hadibor shenid bak merachok. That would stop the flow of the voice, the sound of the voice, which is flowing, which is speaking from afar. Harayu mishanet teva habarzel v'chukei teva sheba. So he says that wrapping this um, shatnez thread around the electrical wire stops it from functioning as a telegraph, takes away its telegraphic capabilities. So that's an interesting idea. First, I'd never seen the Nitziv mention anything like this that was obviously in his day a very contemporary technological uh, apparatus. Um, and what's also confusing about it is that he says wrapping uh, shotness around it would make it cease to work, but it seems to me like that wouldn't just be true if you wrapped shotness about it, around it, but other materials as well, wrapping in such a way around the wires in the phone or the telegraph would also cause them to cease to work. So I don't know exactly what the Nitziv is referring to, but I found it to be very interesting nonetheless. So he goes on uh, a little bit and notes that Hare um, mutar la rog shatnez ve'eno aser el alil bosh. It's actually it's uh, permissible to sew to create shatnez together. You just can't uh, wear it. Ela mizay yadanu shachala al shatnez eizer ruach ha meabedet et kocho. Something about shatnez uh, destroys an internal. Uh, it's sort of internal or concomitant spiritual power, and v'humazik et alav shogam can, it also hurts the person who's wearing it on a spiritual level. V'gam zeyadu le'ezim achach mei umat ha'olam, and he claims also, very interestingly, that that fact is also known to some scientists in the world. Okay, interesting claim. I don't know where he's basing that off of, and he concludes by saying, v'az harezu shayich es gam ken l'shmirat shalom b'medina. And if people, if Jews can uh, refrain from wearing Shatner's clothing, that will also be good for the whole nation. This is a general approach of the Nitzivs in this whole passage that all of these rules that are being discussed, all of these mitzvahs in the preceding verses, which have to do with agricultural tzedakah, not cursing the deaf, loving your neighbors yourself, these are all rules which jointly serve uh, to help uh, at the Jewish nation thrive. How so? How, what's, so how does it work that if I don't wear a shot and as I'm helping our people? Because, as he said, wearing shot and damages the spiritual plane on the world of formation, the world of Bria. That also affects negatively and imperils the physical world. Because that which exists in the world, uh, in the physical world, is sort of existing uh, through or on account of the spiritual world. So that's the insight here of the Nitziv. Not so groundbreaking into what he brings to the table regarding Shatnez, but I thought it was very interesting to see these two examples where he seems to believe uh, that sh wearing Shatnez or the creation of Shatnez is damaging in various ways, and that at least the Nitziv understands that that was known to, to science uh, of his time. Very interesting. Always a pleasure to learn the Nitziv with you, and I look forward to next week.